Now that we have defined and used operators, we must stress a very important point. The order that operators are applied can be very important. We will discuss first what it means for order to not matter, but we will do a couple of examples which will demonstrate when order does matter. Given two operators, a hat and b hat, if they are applied sequentially to a function f of x, then we can say a hat b hat f of x. That gives a hat g of x, which then eventually gives h of x. And this assumes that when b hat is applied to f of x, that we would get g of x. Remember that operators are always applied from right to left, so the closest one to the function is always evaluated first. If it's the case that if the order of the operators were reversed, meaning I could write b hat a hat times f of x, then we would say that the operators a hat and b hat commute if b hat times a hat times f of x also resulted in h of x, meaning that it just resulted in the exact same thing. If that's the case, the order that they are applied is not important. Let's now look at two examples to help illustrate the idea of when operators commute and when they do not commute. Now the commutation relation, or one that we would write, is we would say we use these square brackets and then we put the two operators that we want to determine if they commute or not inside the two brackets. And what this represents is to just do this calculation where we would say a hat b hat minus b hat a hat. And if that's equal to zero, then we say that they commute, the operators commute, meaning that the order that I applied them, if I apply a hat b hat and I subtract the order of b hat a hat applied to some function, then it doesn't matter which order I do it in because the order gave the exact same value. And so then the difference between the two would give zero. If they're non-zero, then we would say that the operators do not commute, meaning that the, if I reverse the order, I get something different, so I get non-zero. So let's apply that to this first example to find out if this version of a hat and this version of b hat, if they commute. So here in this case I have a hat is equal to d by dx, I have b hat is equal to x squared. So then we have to evaluate then the order a hat b hat, and then we have to evaluate the order of b hat a hat, and then we just subtract the two and we find out if it's equal to zero or if it's not zero to make our final conclusion. So let's do or we'll write out the two cases. We have a hat, b hat, and we have b hat, a hat. And what's typically convenient whenever we do this type of commutation relationship is that we just introduce some dummy function. In this case, I'm just writing it as f of x. And basically what this function does is it allows us to more easily keep stock of um, certain operations like, say, take the derivative of something. So we need to have those operators applied to something, in this case, this trial function f of x, so that we can more easily keep track of when we've actually applied differentials to things. That's just one example, and you'll see it used here, which is why I specifically denote differentials. So let's look at the first case, this a hat b hat times f of x. Let's explicitly write in the two operators, d by dx, x squared, f of x. So when I apply b hat to f of x, that's just taking x squared and multiplying it by f of x. So there's nothing else that I can do here with that operation. So then next I'm going to apply a hat. a hat is take the derivative of everything to the right of it. Well that means I'm going to take the derivative of x squared times f of x, which means that I'm going to have to apply the product rule here. So I would say first times the derivative of the second, x squared times df by dx, plus the second times the derivative of the first, f of x times 2x. Since there's nothing else that I can do here, then I can simply just finish writing this off where I'm just going to clean up my terms, x squared plus df by dx plus 2x f of x. Now let's look at if when I order or when I reverse the order, b hat times a hat times my dummy function f of x. Well my first step is I will explicitly write in both operators. So I have b hat is x squared, a hat is d by dx, and then I have f of x. So first I'll apply a hat to f of x. Well, that's just take the derivative of f of x. So I get x squared times df by dx. 
My next thing is to then multiply that by x squared. So I'm applying b hat now to the result. Well, that's just x squared times df by dx. And there's nothing else that I can do here with that term. So then my final thing is that I'm now going to then take the difference between these two. I'm just going to write down my result from a hat b hat, and I'm going to subtract that from my result from b hat a hat. And again, if I get zero, then I say they commute. And if I get non-zero, then we would say they do not commute. So a hat b hat minus b hat a hat. Well, that's equal to x squared df by dx plus 2x f of x. And from that, I'm going to subtract off x squared df by dx. And what we can see here is that I have x squared df by dx, and I subtract off x squared df by dx, so I can just cancel out those two terms. That means then that the result of this difference is 2x times f of x. And at this point, I can also drop my f of x since it was just a dummy function, just basically as you saw to keep track of these differentials that happened here and here. And so because now I've finished operating or finishing finding my commutation relationship, then I can just drop it. And so what we would say is that the difference in a hat b hat minus b hat a hat is 2 times x. And because this is not equal to 0, then we would say that these two operators do not commute. Let's now look at our second example. Our second example is a hat is equal to the differential operator d by dx, and our second operator b, that's just going to be equal to 2. Again, we're going to write out our two cases, a hat, b hat, and we have over here b hat, a hat. So let's evaluate those two pieces. First, the a hat times b hat. a hat is d by dx times 2. And again, I'm going to insert this trial dummy function, this f of x, so we can keep track of certain things like differentials. And again, I multiply 2 by f of x, so I get 2f of x. That's when I add or when I apply b hat to my trial function. Now I have d by dx times 2 times f of x. So again, here I'm now applying a to the result. Well, I can pull the 2 out front, and I'm just left with df by dx, or 2 times df by dx is the result. Now what happens when I reverse the order? I get 2. I have d by dx if I want to explicitly write in b hat and a hat. And again, I'm going to insert this, this dummy function so that I can keep track of the differential. I apply a hat to f of x. Well, that just gives me df by dx. And then I apply b hat to the result, and I get 2 times df by dx. I can then write out this difference that I have to evaluate to test if I have something that commutes, a hat b hat minus b hat a hat, while well, a hat b hat is just 2 times df by dx. From that I'm going to subtract off 2 times df by dx. And we can see that I'm subtracting the exact term from itself, which means that this difference is going to be equal to 0. And so in this case we can say that a hat and b hat do in fact commute.